Just give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. <laughs> All right, we are fully loaded. Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar on open streets and public space programming. I'm Lori Cumble, your commissioner of the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs. For many of you who may not be familiar with our agency, we are the largest municipal funder of the arts. In addition to grant making, we run the Percent for Art program. Many of you might have seen our incredible public art projects all across the city of New York, which requires that 1% of budget for an eligible city funded construction project be spent on public artwork. We also run materials for the arts, which I would strongly recommend if you are a not-for-profit, this is the organization you wanna be a part of. It's a creative reuse center in Long Island City, which collects reusable materials from businesses across the five boroughs and makes them available for free, free of charge. Did you all hear me? Free of charge, materials, furniture, opportunities for your office or your organization to be able to get free materials to do outdoor programming, festivals, you name it. And this is an incredible organization, especially with our New York City public schools and city agencies. Our work is grounded in the belief that the arts are viable and they are incredible for a healthy and safe society. I want to thank our colleagues from the Department of Transportation for partnering with us, yay, Donis Rodriguez, and presenting this webinar specifically for New York arts, cultural, and creative organizations. You are community hubs, sources of social and economic vibrancy for neighborhoods in every corner of our city. So thank you. New York wouldn't be a global creative capital without the arts and cultural activity that you bring to our city for all that you do. So it's an honor to support you and work alongside you. Today's webinar is part of our efforts to connect our arts and cultural organizations to programming opportunities offered by our city agency partners. To be clear, the programs we are discussing today are separate and distinct from the open cultural program administered by the Streets Activities Permitting Office. We will be working with them to provide more details and clarity on that program in the coming weeks. Today's webinar will take you through the application process for DOT's programs. The Open Streets program transforms streets into public space for a range of activities that promote economic development, support schools, facilitate pedestrian and bike mobility, and provide new ways for New Yorkers to enjoy cultural programming and build community. This is so exciting because you get to curate your neighborhood. The public space programming connects public spaces such as plazas and open streets with local organizations to activate the spaces with a variety of enriching activities to engage local communities. DOT is accepting applications for both of these amazing programs and will discuss each program in detail during the webinar before opening up the discussion for a live Q&A. Did I say live? It's going to be live Q&A, including questions submitted in advance. Today's event will be recorded and made available on DCLA's YouTube channel for future reference. So if you didn't catch it, if you want to go over the information, it will be there on our YouTube channel so that you can play it again and really absorb the information. And I hope that you will do that. I can't wait to see all the incredible programming you are going to be bringing to our streets and open spaces. This is going to be exactly what New York City is all about. We want to provide a lot more opportunities like this to bring our partners in government and the cultural sector together, providing greater transparency and highlighting opportunities for partnership. So stay tuned. Signing up for our newsletter at nyc.gov forward slash culture is one way to stay informed. Thank you again for joining. And now I'm so happy to turn it over to Daisy Gonzalez, Assistant Director of Public Space Programming at DOT, who will lead today's presentation. And I wanna thank Andel Castillo for her incredible work and working in partnership to make today possible. So thank you all so much. I can't wait to see how you are gonna create a more vibrant New York City in a street on every corner in New York City. So thank you all so much. It's an honor to be the Commissioner of Cultural Affairs and I'm excited to see our creative juices at work. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for the opportunity to present here. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to meet all of you. Um, we have a great room. I see a lot of um, names and we are very excited to get things started. Um, like um, the commissioner said, my name is Daisy Gonzalez. I'm the assistant director of DOT's uh, public space programming. I oversee programming in all our public spaces, open streets and plazas. Today, I'm here with my team, Burkina and Sal, and I'm gonna let them introduce themselves. Um, Burkina? 
Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Burkina Morgan work alongside Daisy and Sal and public space. Um, I'm the program manager for the Open Streets program um, and looking forward to presenting our, our information today. Press to you, Sal. Hi everyone, I'm Sal Garrow. I'm the coordinator of public space programming here at DOT. Uh, work very closely with Daisy and Burkina and Kyle, who couldn't make it today. Um, relatively new here at the DOT, and very excited to uh, tell you guys all about what we have in store for programming in Open Streets. Thank you. So today we're going to go over the Open Streets and Public Space programming application. And at the end of the webinar presentation, you will have opportunity to ask questions. Also, I encourage everyone to use the chat uh, to send those questions as well. And I will pass it on to Burkina to get things started with the, the Open Street application. Okay. Um, can someone give me a thumbs up and let me know that you can see my screen? Perfect. All right, so for today's presentation, we're gonna be going over um, our Open Streets program for this past year, um, do an overview of the application for the 2024 season of Open Streets, um, going through our partner resource operational layer, and then we're gonna go through some stuff with having to do with programming and then next steps for both applications. Okay, so 2023, for Open Streets was very exciting. It was our biggest year yet. Um, we launched our Open Street um, and had 24 in total for the year, 25 miles, um, 195 separate locations that occupied 382 city blocks. Um, and we launched our program and our season on Car Free Earth Day in April. And um, we'll be doing, plan to do the same thing this year. And so it's gonna be even bigger and better than last year, but some of our sites were on Willis Avenue in the Bronx, on 34th Avenue in Queens. And we had 46 new community partners, um, including some schools that joined our mission in promoting the use of streets as public space. One of our newest um, partners is on Jackson Avenue. It's PSMS5, along with Street Lab, East 123rd Street in East Harlem, and Evelyn Place in the Bronx. We have a plethora of different types of partners, so not only schools, but also community-based organizations. We had around 70 community-based organizations, both formal and informal, but we also partner with bids and restaurant groups. So there is a diversity in partnerships that we work with. And then one of the things that we do at Open Streets is not only celebrate our successes, but we look to evolve some of our really successful Open Streets into plazas and shared streets. This is an example of one. So this plaza, Kensington Plaza, was formerly Beverly Road Open Street, and now it has become Kensington Plaza, this vibrant space that is now a open space for everyone that is open at all times, not only when you activate or when they would have activated the open street. The next one is 103rd Street. So it's not a plaza, but it has... Um, We've implemented some treatments that enhance its uh, public space presence. I'll pass it over to Sal. Thanks, Burkina. So uh, next we're going to talk about Trick or Streets, which is uh, a very exciting program. Uh, it is when uh, we close streets around the city during one of the historically busiest nights of the year for pedestrians. And um, take advantage of that space by celebrating Halloween safely uh, without fear of cars. Um, this is our second annual event uh, this past year, and uh, it was greatly successful. One of my uh, my favorite facts about this is that there are, there are lots of giveaways that happen uh, during Trick or Streets, and we gave away uh, 1,500 pumpkins and gourds uh, with our partners from the Hort, uh, and we also gave away over 1,000 pounds of candy. Uh, there were over 100 events for Trick or Streets this year. Uh, the most we've ever done, including 16 premier sites and uh, lots of programming around the city. Uh, here's an image from Kiskeya Plaza uh, in Upper Manhattan. And this is actually the first year uh, right around the corner from Halloween uh, is Dia de los Muertos, and we celebrated it 
uh, in a big fashion in Times Square with uh, apparently one of the uh, largest cultural events that ever happened in Times Square Plaza. And um, yeah, lots of programming, uh, dance performances, um, Katrina exhibits and altars to honor different states around Mexico. There's some images from that day. Uh, the one in the center there is a very large Katrina that was brought in from Mexico. And back over to Burkina. And so we are gearing up for our second annual Holiday Open Streets, which is our Fifth Avenue uh, closure for um, Open Streets. And that happens on Sundays in the month of December. So our next one is going to be this Sunday on the seventh on the seventeenth. Um, extremely exciting and uh, beautiful display of uh, what the reimagining of pedestrian space looks like, especially on such a wide corridor like Fifth Avenue. Um, and, you know, as we move forward and reimagine the function of our New York City streets, we look to creating more opportunities and more spaces for people to walk, bike, sit, gather, um, and really reimagine what our roadways could look like. And that's kind of a wrap up of what our 2023 open street season um, has looked like. Getting into our 2024 open streets application. So, Basic overview of what are open streets. It's a permanent New York City program that really transforms New York City streets into public space for everyone. It allows for a range of activities to promote economic development, support schools, and provide new ways for us to enjoy cultural programming and build community. And it's really community building done by community, not done by this agency or our program. But we work in partnership with organizations, community-based organizations, educational institutions, um, and business groups in order to activate these spaces throughout the city. Um, and what's new in 2024 is really we're expanding the resources that we can offer our community partners in terms of operations um, and providing, you know, additional funding, materials, um, programming support, technical assistance that partners need in order to make their open streets successful in this city. I mean, in the um, this season more active than even last year. And in addition to that, as you're going to see, we have a fully built out programming arm of the public space um, portion of, of our team. And then who should apply? As we mentioned, community-based organizations, civic groups, um, business improvement districts, blocks, block associations. So when we say community-based organizations, it doesn't have to always be formal. Um, there's also educational institutions, and that spans from pre-K to 12, colleges, universities. We do ask if you um, are affiliated with a school or, you know, considering passing this on to school, do make sure that you're involved in the administration. Um, and then, of course, there are business Businesses. We want to make sure that we're supporting our businesses. And so some of our most unique open streets are run by businesses. There are three types of open streets. There's limited local access, full closure, and full closure for schools. Our limited or local access allows not only for a focus on pedestrian um, flow and circulation and also for cyclist use, but it also allows for local vehicle access that is um, permitted on the street, primarily for parking, delivery and loading, accessoride, um, emergency vehicles. Um, and that's in... in that's separate from our full closure, which is a temporary street closure not and vehicles are not permitted on that street. So it is specifically for pedestrian and cyclists um, and it supports local businesses, community organizations and schools. Full closure is very similar to our full closure, foreclosure schools. It's very similar to our full closure, but it's specifically for schools to support the needs of schools, whether it's pick up and drop off, recess, outdoor learning. In terms of criteria for the limited local access, um, it cannot occur on streets that are along bus and truck routes. Um, and uh, recurring regular schedule of seven days, you know, it is active. Um, it can be active with the 
with uh, vehicle access. So that's an important thing. Um, some streets, we, it's not practical for it to be um, active without vehicle access. So that's a huge, unique portion to limited local access. Full closure, um, it once again, regular uh, schedule between nine and midnight, up to seven days a week. This can be located, located on a bus and truck route, um, but only be impacted, and bus and truck routes can only be impacted on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays and holidays. For full closure, it's during school hours and for school operations from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. cannot occur on a bus route or a truck route. These are some examples of those three types of open streets. So limited local access, as you can see, there are pedestrians, bikers, and then in addition to that, there are um, some vehicles on the street. Full closure, no vehicles here, but there is pedestrian and cyclist access. And as you can see, outdoor dining. And for our full closure schools, you can see kids are out there. There's an area for people to do pickup, drop off, in addition to outdoor activities, recess, play, and outdoor learning. In terms of partner responsibilities, we really look to our partners to manage this open street, right? It is in the community and we want it to reflect the community and be from the community, right? And so um, setting up and breaking down materials, but also more importantly, being the stakeholders that are reaching out and doing a lot of the communications um, about your open street um, in various mediums and various platforms and then perform um, coordinating with New York City DOT and our offices in our department to really potentially boost your 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 street as much as possible, boost your open street. We provide, as I mentioned before, operational support for both management, um, cleaning. We have an operational arm that is there to support in, um, in really practical ways on the ground. For the application, these are the five items that are required as supporting documentation. So the site plan, which really um, requires you to uh, show an unobstructed emergency access lane um, for any emergency vehicles, um, include any programming and outdoor dining areas, really showing a template of what you see the street, um, envision the street as when it's closed. A management plan detailing how you plan to barricade and uh, manage um, the street overall. Um, and uh, outreach plan, it's really about communication with your with your community, um, outreach in terms of programming, outreach in terms of starting the street, all different types of outreach, um, and really putting that into a plan for us to see how, um, how you plan to engage with your community. Letters of support, we do require at least three letters of support from community stakeholders. If you are a recurring applicant, that is not necessary, but any new applicants do need to submit three letters of support and a budget proposal. We wanna see what you plan on spending any funding on, what you believe is required to have a successful open street. Um, and so that's really the crux of um, the budget proposal. And out of these five, we do have a template for the site plan. This is an example of a site plan. As you can see, there's the emergency lane, um, some detailed areas dedicated to specific things. Um, again, an example of a management plan, staffing operational plan. Doesn't need to be extensive. It just needs to be clear about what your plans are and what your vision is. Same thing for the outreach plan. Letters, letters of support, we do ask that they come from community stakeholders, people in your local community. Um, that's extremely important. Some people get elected to the community board, um, but definitely need letters of support and a budget proposal. In terms of open street next steps, um, any open streets that are looking to be open before June 30th, we do have a deadline for application of uh, January 31st. If you plan to launch your open street after July 1st, then um, we have an extension until March 1st of 2024. But any questions, any um, assistance you may need with the application, um, please feel free to reach out to us at openstreets.dot.nyc.gov. I'm going to hand it over to Daisy. Oh, no, not yet. Um, we're going to go over our partner resource and operational layer. 
All right, so we have three types of support that we really uh, offer to our open street partners to support our open streets, and that's funding. And so we offer community part our partners funding based on the size and scale of our open streets. We follow a formula that takes into account how active your street is throughout the year. And um, in addition to some equity goals that we have as an agency um, in order to determine the amount of funding that can be offered, and you must be a nonprofit in, in order to be eligible to receive funding as an open street partner. And um, what's it called, a New York City uh, DOT, you know, shares other funding opportunities throughout the season. So if we see scholarships, if we see grants, we make sure to share that with our partners as well. Um, in terms of operational support, in partnership with the HORT, which is a huge operational partner, they um, assist us in managing our open streets on the ground. So barrier setup, um, helping with um, horticulture, maintenance, um, cleanup on many streets, and they also help with a lot of technical support. So when we when we move into that technical assistance line, they are pivotal when it comes to that as well. We have a few other partners that we work with, but the HORT is our main and uh, major operational um, partner that we have. And this kind of outlines what the Hort does. If you see a lot of planters um, on the street, not only on our open streets, but in general at our plazas, the Hort has a big hand in that, uh, maintaining those spaces, maintaining those planters. Um, programming implementation. So they do offer programming for our open streets and operational support, like setting up and breaking down barriers, light maintenance, and any other on the ground um, support. Another one of our partners is Street Lab, and they work with DOT to support all of our public spaces, especially in historically underserved areas of the city. Um, and so they really work with grassroots groups to implement open streets throughout the city. They also support them in terms of programming. A lot of these pieces that you see on the street, like the 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 table that they said that they're playing it, playing um at the chairs, like they work with design to make sure that they create this built environment within the open street that's welcoming. But they also assist in terms of that technical assistance, right? So permits, logistics, staffing, um, they also help with community engagement and evaluation. And now I'm gonna pass it to Daisy for our programming. Thank you, Rakina. Um, so we're gonna go over the programming um, application. Uh, for those who are not familiar with it, the programming list serves as a planning tool uh, for all open streets and plaza partners to use and activate their public spaces. And it's also used by us, DOT, to activate spaces in, um, for certain initiatives like uh, Car Free Earth Day, Summer Streets, Trigger Streets. Um, Public space programming connects public spaces like open streets and plazas with organizations that can help activate these spaces. Um, this program um, does not services to locations that are not DOT property like parks, schools, and private spaces. Uh, this free activations promote the positive use of the space and also engage with the community um, and these programming partners are required to obtain the necessary permits required by the Street Activity Permitting Office, also known as SAPO, and for events for events in DOT public spaces. Um, and DOT will provide uh, technical assistance and guidance as needed uh, for these programming partners. So our programming season begins in April through October, but there are instances in which we will provide uh, winter programming. Um, there has been some instances where we, that we have done some winter wonderland and it has been very beautiful. Um, next slide. So for this year, I'm very excited. Um, we have a request for qualifications for organizations that are interested in providing programming to open streets and plazas in the following categories, which is new for um, this year, 2023. Arts and culture, cycling, micromobility, active lifestyle, learning educational and production services. Applicants 
cannot be placed in more than two categories and they must submit one application per category. Um, next slide. So what is an RF, RFQ? It's a request for qualification that are interested um, organizations can send us uh, for programming. Uh, the application is now open and the chosen applicants will be added to the public space programming list for two years um, beginning the 2024 to 2026. And this organizations will be eligible to provide programming in our public spaces. And it's like I said, this is a programming list is an excellent tool for partners to use and just want to um, ensure it, uh, that acceptance to the programming list does not guarantee of uh, funding. I'm going to pass it over to Sal and he will provide details on the types of programming and also uh, eligibility for the program. Thanks, Daisy. Uh, so yeah, we'll just go over generally the uh, types of programming uh, that Daisy mentioned. First, there's arts, culture, and design. Uh, these are performances such as theater, dance, singing, um, circus acts, dance groups, musicians, live art installations. Uh, and then we have uh, a category that we've built out this year a little bit more to include cycling and micromobility. Um, that was formerly a uh, general fitness category. Now we're um, we're really branching out of in the active lifestyle realm. Um, so this includes uh, learn to ride classes, uh, group rides, repair stations, um, bike maintenance, and then uh, for fitness, you know, um, aerobics and yoga, meditation. Uh, moving on to the next one for learning and educational. Um, Burkina mentioned our partner, uh, Street Lab. So any kind of like pop-up libraries or drawing tables, reading tables, book fairs, uh, those kinds of things would fall under learning and educational. And lastly, the uh, new category of production services uh, are really in support of the other three categories. So let's say, for example, if you're a dance group and you need a small stage or some kind of stage management, uh, production services would uh, provide that for uh, for those different activations. Um, really any kind of like audiovisual uh, support, uh, live mixing if you're a band, something like that. So we're excited to build out uh, that category as well. Here's some images uh, for each of those categories. We've got uh, arts, culture, and design. This one is from Corona Plaza for uh, one of our summer series. And then we've got a bike repair station uh, happening at uh, Bike the Block on Jennings Street. Learning and educational is uh, Street Lab. I love their big tables that they set up. And we've got some kids drawing here. And last one uh, is on a plaza. You can see that there's a lot of technical support needed here for the band to set up. So hoping that we can uh, get linked up with some production services partners that could uh, provide these services. So for eligibility, um, essentially in inclusion is important to our program and equity is, is a major focus. Um, all proposed activities should be free and open to the public, uh, designed for all people, all ages, all abilities, and programming should be appropriate for the diverse neighborhoods across New York City. Um, we highly encourage submissions from uh, MWBEs, so um, please apply if you are one. Here is uh, an example of a price proposal. So we're going to need two required documents. Uh, one of them is a price proposal, as you can see an example of to your right. And then um, we are also requesting uh, photographs that showcase what kind of activations you can do in our public spaces. For our next steps, uh, application is open now. So as soon as you are done with this webinar, please go and apply. Deadline for programming is January 31st. And um, as soon as we get all the applications in, we will review and uh, notify everyone of their acceptance into the list, onto the list uh, in the spring. And if you need any help, you can reach us at programming at dot.myc.gov. I'm going to pass it back to Burkina for concessions. Okay, so um, on our open streets, as I mean, I'm sure many of you have seen 
there may be farmers markets or um, food events. Um, and so these are examples of what we consider a short uh, we, we consider a short term concession. And opportunities so opportunities for concession to conduct revenue generating activity on open streets is done through the short term concession process. Normally, on an open street, um, if you put in just an applica application without going through the short term concession process, there's no activity that's permitted that's revenue generating, and so this would allow for up to twenty nine days. Um, within a 365 day period for you to have those concession revenue generating activities. And concessioners are often required to provide maintenance services during their hours of operation. Um, example of that would just be um, events, classes, um, sales of merchandise, like I said, farmers markets of different types, um, food markets, um, and so you must complete a separate application from the open street. So if you're looking for, if you're looking into something like this, um, please reach out to us, openstreets at dot.nyc.gov. But it's you put in for your open street application, and then this would be separate just to make sure that there's clarity on the fact that these are not the same. These are some examples. So stall style, um, stall style markets like uh, farmers markets and uh, there's also cultural concessions some cultural events that um, are revenue generating such as this one in the meat packing um, and there are other examples of short-term concessions but if you're interested like I said reach out to open streets and this is really the application timeline for both open streets and public space um, and as mentioned any the, uh, January 31st is for any applications for open streets that is uh, looking, that are looking to launch prior to June 30th, anything after uh, June 30th, July 1 to the end of the year, it would really be um, April, in, that would be deadline is in, is in April. Daisy. Sorry, I was kept on mute. So um, our application notification period is for spring 2024. Just um, just want to uh, make sure that uh, set expectations. But after we review all the applications, we'll reach out to our programming partners to kind of set up some time to kind of understand uh, the programming that they offer. Um, so that will be it for our webinar. Um, We'll be getting questions. I know there was a few questions on the chat. Uh, we responded, but please, if you have any questions, please reach out to us. I'm gonna stop sharing um, and allow you guys the opportunity to ask any questions that you may have. I could go with uh, with some of them, the one that were submitted in advance, and then we'll go directly in with the questions from the um, the webinar. Uh, there was one that says, when will you know if there is funding available for this Open Street program? So funding will be available. Um, if you have any further questions on that, please email our Open Street email. And there was also, can you clarify how DOT supports Open Street programming? Um, like I said, programming list is a planning tool for all open streets and plaza to activate uh, the public spaces. And we use it to activate uh, spaces like Car Free Earth Day and Trick or Streets. Um, like the commissioner mentioned, this separate opportunity from the open culture, which is separate, is via SAPA. So this is not related to open culture. Um, there was one uh, interesting one that I thought it was um, uh, important to kind of understand how can we determine which public spaces are managed by the DOT and eligible for public space programming under this initiative. All our plazas and open street are listed on our website. You could either search it by borough and easy to navigate. Again, if you have an open street um, or location in mind that you would like to apply, please reach out to Burkina. Um, if you want, we could just jump in for some other questions and we could just al alternate with the questions that were uh, previously submitted. Uh, Evan? Hi, yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm just um, 
for clarification, so does an organization to apply for open streets, does it have to be, is there a minimum number of times that that open street has to be has to be uh, applied for or, or, or rather to say if we wanted to apply for a one time open street event in the summer, would that be something that Joe's organization does or does it need to be something that occurs over multiple weeks, multiple months? Thank you. Thank you for your question. Um, it, so any uh, open street needs to be active for at the very least four consecutive weeks. Um, and that does not mean four weeks in terms of seven days. It can be once a week, but it needs to be active for at the very least four weeks. If you wanted to do a single occurring event, then you just have to go through SAPO. Um, and that would be just for one one a uh, one time occurrence but any open street is a re it's a recurring event for at least 4 weeks thank you no problem tobacco brown okay unmute can you hear me now yes Okay, thank you so much, Daisy. Uh, I'm coming to ask uh, two questions. Uh, is it possible that an organization can apply to become a support partner to you, um, i.e. the Hort and Street Lab? Are you open for applications of that nature? Well, really where we'd start is really if you have services that you want to offer, um, start off by applying as a programming partner. That's the best way to start. Um, we've had a long relationship with both of those organizations, which is kind of elevated to where they are right now. Um, and so we're not shutting down or we're always open to new partners. Um, but the best entryway to that is through the programming um, application. And then once we start the conversation, see where it goes. Okay, I, I'll follow through with that. That's what I had planned to apply in. And one other question, is it possible as far as uh, programming, do you work with the park? If I have an idea for an area with the New York Park, is it possible to work within those parameters or is, is it just for the open streets? Could it be a little in cove where we're like the foot of a park where a park begins? Well, so we're... Yeah, um, we work collaboratively with the uh, with parks department, but in areas that are only open streets and plazas, that will be DOT and programming can only happen in DOT owned spaces. Okay, great. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Thank you so very much. Thank you for your question. Uh, there's one on the chat um, regarding short-term concessions. Uh, do the vendors pay a percentage of their income to the city? No, this is one of those unique um, programs um, and applications where there is no fee from the city. You go through this process um, and it is revenue generating for the organization um, that actually produces and conducts a short-term concession and has the agreement, but there's no fee to the city. I will say short-term concessions are one-year agreements. Um, and so, I mean, there's a lot of other details and caveats that go into it. So if you are in, interested in a short-term concession, please email, um, email us and we can follow up and have a more in-depth conversation. I'm just quickly going to go over the document that was submitted with the questions. Uh, one of the questions was, are we allowed to take photos, videos of our sessions with the community? And the answer is yes, with their permissions. Um, how do participants sign up or they just show up? All our programming activities in our public spaces are all free and open to anyone in the community. Um, there was another question regarding a uh, youth. Is there a youth-led component? So we do have a Bike the Block in initiative that encourages cycling. And in part of the programming of Bike the Block is learn to ride classes. And we partnered with Bike New York to offer those classes, classes for both adults and kids. Um, one of the questions was, um, programming partners will get paid. 
And that was one of the questions if they will just get paid or for exposure. So programming partners do get paid. Um, does anybody from our the room has any questions, follow up, concerns? Thank you, Rosalyn. Hi, thank you for having me. Um, my question is, uh, let's say you're an artist and you do uh, from Canada and you do some collaborations and you, you get a residency in whatever organization and they have partnership with XYZ community and would it be possible uh, does it have to be written by a person who's American or like a Canadian can write it as long as they have an uh, American uh, partner? Um, it is, is this in reference to Open Street or is it just um, uh, programming? No, no, like anything like Open Street for festival, stuff like that. Well, I think that um, primarily we like to source most of our, whether it's programming partners, definitely open street partners locally. So um, if you have a, a partner or programming partner or community partner that is here in the city in New York um, that wants to get involved and they want to work with you, we have no problem with our community partners pulling other people in. Um, but we want to make sure like these spaces are representative of our city. And um, and so with that being said, just make sure that you are connected to someone that is locally here. Um, and in order to in order to boost your your services. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Um, the next is Donna. Hello, thank you. Um, are we, is, I'm a little confused with open streets. Um, can any place in the city, like we're on West 43rd Street, um, can we activate an area there or is this only for certain parts of the city? It's for everywhere. It's for everywhere. I mean, there are logistical things that, that really determine whether an open street would work on a specific corridor, but it's not for any specific part of the city. This is a citywide program. Like I mentioned, we have um, right now on Sundays um, in December, we have Holiday Open Street, which is on Fifth Avenue, right? And it's yeah. going from like 60 something all the way to 47th Street. And mm -hmm. so it can be de depending on what you plan to do, what your management plan is, all of these pieces um, that we require, it, it really can be anywhere. And we have them all across the city in every borough. Um, so don't exclude yourself. Just make sure you have a plan if, if it's okay. something that you're interested in. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Um, the next is New York Handmade Collective. Hi, thank you. Um, I just wanted to clarify, um, in terms of the nonprofit organizations that are eligible, do you do we need to be a 503B nonprofit or is any type of nonprofit okay? Um, eligible for the open street or eligible for programming? Um, eligible for open street and the and the uh, concession part also. Okay. Um so open street um in order for you to get funding as an open street partner it requires for you to be a nonprofit we are non-discriminant about what type of nonprofit as long as you have the paperwork um to support you being a nonprofit in terms of a short term concession that does not require that you are a nonprofit but short term concessions don't afford you funding that's something that you would have to fund in terms of the production of um, 
any type of concession that you were thinking about. So those are two separate things. But in terms about funding, for, in terms of funding for an open street partner, um, you would have to be a nonprofit to be eligible. Okay, thank you. No problem. Thank you. Um, I have next uh, Richard. Yes, I have a quick question. Um, approval for open streets, what role does, does the community board play? Do they have to approve it? <clears throat> so, so the community board has uh, I'll go through the, the approval process, right? So you put in your application. Um, after we meet with you and see what and logistically, whether it's plausible for us to do an open street and location um, and the community that you have uh, proposed, we have those conversations. If we say, if we have chosen to approve an open street, then we send a notification that there's an interest in doing an open street to lo local elected officials and the community board. And there is a 45-day period that the community board local officials and other stakeholders have to oppose uh, that open street and kind of voice their opposition if there is any or short support. And so when it comes to community board involvement, that's where it comes in. It gets screened through us and then we bring it to elected officials and community boards. And from there, that's when you'd, um, you'd voice your opinion. Okay. I hope so that answers your question. You're not required then to initiate anything through the community board. You initiate it through DOT, and then you, if approved, you go you go to the community board. So I, as an applicant, do not have to reach out to the community board at all. Because we've no. gotten put from the community board. Right. So you go through us first, right? Um, what we do, like community boards are in my eyes, sacred places um, that we don't want to be cumbersome of. So come through us, see if it's plausible, and then you can go to them. When it comes to outreach, like let's say you have um, a community board, you've already been approved, you've gone through that process, that 45-day period, it should be a part of your outreach. You want your community to know what you're doing. Um, and so there should be some interaction at some point, but um, we have a process in terms of when when that engagement um, is ideal. Okay, appreciate that. Thank you. No problem. Thank you so much for your question, Richard. Um, I have Zoe next. Hi, thank you so much uh, for having this webinar. Um, I was wondering uh, if corporate sponsors or, um, for example, corporate members of our board would be allowed to be involved in the programming execution as long as they're not selling anything. This is for programming, correct? Yes, uh, we have a lot of um, media partners that would, that would like, maybe have games or supplies that they might provide, but I I just wanted to know if that was allowed. We could definitely explore that. If you could just send me an email and I'll set up a meeting with you to discuss that. Um, we will more than happy to go over it. Great, thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, um, is there's no other questions, I will continue with the questions previously submitted. Um, one of the questions also were, is there a particular time of the year the project need to be executed? So there, uh, uh, this is just um, RFQ and we are not looking for uh, concrete proposals of your activation with start end dates currently. It's just kind of basic proposal what your activation will be and that will be uh, fine. You don't need to have specific dates. Um, also another question was, I want to know how can this be uh, per suggested dates or ongoing street opening daily or designated hours? And the answer is it can be both. Um, Zoe, do you have another question? I see your hand up. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just want to make sure. Okay. Um, does anyone else have any any other questions or follow up questions?
Okay. There was one question specific about art uh, installations. Uh, we do partner with DOT Arts Program, and they are the team in charge of overseeing any art installations in our plazas. And we could refer to you uh, to them if you could just send us an email. Also, there is a. Uh, more information in our DOT website uh, pertaining to the DOT arts program. Um, the last questions that I have here is for crafting workshops that might entail sewing, sewing machines, what insurance is required by the city for coverage. Uh, we refer that uh, to SAPO website. I will suggest uh, if you have any programming activity that requires or you don't know the specific um, certificate of insurance or city coverage to contact SAPO directly. So they will um, in, uh, ensure that you have the right application and the right coverage for that application. I also wanted to add, because I got a couple um, messages in the chat about um, speaking further. Uh, if you have any questions, if there's something that didn't get answered or something that you want to ask directly instead of in this um, webinar forum, please email us, um, openstreets at newyorkcity.com gov.nyc.gov or programming at dot.nyc.gov. I always mix that up. Um, and we're going to also send out the, the presentation and our emails are there as well. And it should help in terms of um, if there are certain things that we missed, um, any fine print that may be in the presentation that we didn't say out loud um, as a guide while you put in those applications. But please do not hesitate to email um, either one, either one of our programs for further questions or assistance. Yeah, I just shared those email addresses in the chat. Um, if you want to schedule some time with us to go over any technical difficulties or you have any run some ideas by us before you submit your application, we'll be more than happy to assist you with it. Um, it's a very simple programming application, but if you need any kind of assistance, just please let us know. Um, we'll be more than happy to do so. Um, again, you can apply for more than one category, whether it's arts and culture and learning educational. Um, we're just trying to revamp our existing programming list uh, with new innovative ideas of programming uh, our streets and reimagine how it will look and encourage the safe, uh, safe way to use those public spaces. Sal, did I miss anything? Will I add anything? I think you covered it all. Um, I, I do see something in the chat here about um, material support um, for open streets. Um, I'm not sure if you want to talk about that, Burkina. Um, I don't see it, but we do offer uh, material support. And when we say materials, um, what we imagine is tables, chairs, um, barriers, um, just basic furniture, street furniture that could enhance the public space that you'd be creating as an open street. I'm not sure who asked that question, but if you had anything specific that you were looking for, um, feel free to ask, take yourself off mute and ask. Um, if not, reach out to us via email. Uh, Talitha, can unmute? Hi. Yes. Um, I'm Talitha, and I was the one who asked that question. Um, I asked, I put a few questions in here, but I don't know who it actually went to. Um, so uh, I was thinking about like tables or tents or things like that, just because I am a fitness professional and I do want to offer fitness classes, mm -hmm. but I do also offer events where I invite um, other community um, small businesses to come and sell some of what they have, as well as um, some of the massage therapists and et cetera that I have built into my network over the years to come and offer their services as well. So it's not just a fitness class, it's a whole wellness day or wellness moment for people. Um, so I just wanted to know um, if you guys would be able to offer some help materially with some of those things, which he did answer. So I, I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Thank you, Talitha.
Uh, Henry asked a question regarding programming. Um, is payment information public? Um, I'm not sure what you mean um, is payment information public. Like if there is a website that you see payment, um, if we open a purchase order, um, there is a website uh, where we manage the procurement uh, aspect and it's through Passport. But um, I will have to follow up to see what kind of information does that, uh, is that visible um, through Passport. And you feel free to um, shoot me an email and to ask for any clarification or if you have any further questions, Henry. Some folks were asking about a map of DOT plazas. Um, all open streets, if you go on the DOT website, if you put in Google, let's say uh, New York City DOT plazas, um, there's a web page for our plazas. There is a spreadsheet with all of our um all of our plazas, their locations, and the community partners that manage those plazas. Um, and so everything is on that site. And that also exists for our open streets. I hope that answers your question. And if you are all interested in subscribing to our newsletter, uh, we could share that also in the chat so you could stay updated in any uh, upcoming um, events that we have initiative. Um, um, we will definitely share that in the uh, chat. So subscribe to both uh, newsletter, both open streets and programming. There's another question about the process for permanent structures. Permanent structures, oh, okay, so, so the fact that they're permanent, um, there requires more discussion about what that would look like and where exactly you're referring to. Um, so I would need more information on that. But in general, when it comes to open streets and having permanent structures, um, it's not something that we do or primarily allow. Um, if there's more detail, the person who asked the question is more than welcome to uh, reach out to open streets and um, let us know what they have in mind, whether it's some type of art structure or it could be a number of things. So reach out to us and let you, let us know. Um, and we can have a conversation about what that looks like or what you're envisioning. Thank you so much for your question. I also put in the chat the newsletter signups. Please feel free to sign up. Um, please feel free to, to reach out to us. Uh, we'll get back to you in a timely manner and get you the answer. If we don't have the answer, we will definitely research it, find it for you and reach out. Um, yeah, th thank you all so much for making the time. Um, it's, uh, it has been an um, absolute pleasure. Looking forward to collaborate more with uh, the Primary Cultural Affairs and to learn from each one of you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Department of Transportation. And we, as the commissioner said, we look forward to seeing uh, the programming that um, results from, from this information and from the application. So thanks all for joining and for everything you do to make this city such an incredibly rich, creative center. Yeah, looking forward to an exciting year. We'll share the webinar with you all and looking forward to all your ideas and all your applications. Very exciting.